on. All right, hey, welcome to Couples Corner. Sandy, Ken, we're here every single Tuesday, Tuesday to talk about things not just related to a couple, meaning if you're a couple, but also getting into a relationship, meeting somebody, and making those right decisions. Sandy and I have been through the ringer of relationships, some highs, some lows, me winding up in jail in one of them. Um, I'm not sure what happened with you. I got him out. You got me out. There you go. <laughs> I mean, they've been intense, right? But we've learned along the way what works, what doesn't work. We're on our path. We've been together uh, almost going on two years, but we've gone through, I think, some of the harder processes of our relationship, but we know that we're at the infancy. We get it. And some people that join us in these talks have been together almost 50 years. We have one couple that joins us. But this is a place to talk about what it takes to be a good couple, mm -hmm. regardless if you're straight or gay, but really what it takes. So I first want to start with something I thought was really interesting. You know that lusty love? Not the like, oh, I'm in love, the uh, lusty love? Yes. You already know the answer, okay? But the answer, the question is, how many times does a man fall into love lust? Not like, oh, I got to do her or him, I got to. But where you go, oh, man, I can't wait to be with them. And you get up really early and you comb your hair and you don't go to bed sometimes at night because you want to hang out with them. Because you're texting. Or hanging out with them. Or texting. The average guy is eight times. Eight times in their lifetime, that lusty. Mm. Women, how many times? Eleven. Eleven. And you had a reason. What was it? More hormones. Well, yeah, more yeah. hormones. And girls are more romantic and having hormone yo-yos. And I want to be with him. I love him so much. Ah, okay. And then, you know, babe. But <laughs> now let's talk about falling in love. Like, really loves. Like, where you have fallen in love, head over heels, passionate love, connection love. How many times in, in your lifetime do you think you have real, pure, like, it's love? So... If 11 is for a woman, and that's, of course, on the lusty, mm -hmm. let me just get you here, stay here. What do you think the love, love one is? Like, well, you don't want to leave. You want them around. Three. Ooh, girl, you got it right. Three times. Girl, you know it's true. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Three times. But each love is different. Each love represents something with inside the relationship you have with yourself and with them. Yeah, the I first love, I want you to read this because I love this. First love, go ahead. Can you read it? It says, ah. ah. Your first love, AKA the fairy tale ending, can happen as early as high school. Yeah, sure. Puppy I love. guess so. Puppy yeah. love, yep. It takes over our youth, fulfills our dreams, and we believe that love is supposed to look and feel a certain way. Thank you for that, Disney. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Disney actually has affected you, ladies. You have to hang out with French men. Uh -huh. You have to be in France and you have to uh -huh. wear a, some type of poofy dress. Poofy, poofy dress. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Disney. Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead. But that's your first love, the fairy tale love. Yes, the fairy tale. The second love, can you see it right here? What's it say? Is what you would consider to be hard love. What does that mean? Go ahead, read more. The type of love teaches us to value, teaches us the valuable lessons about ourselves. Ooh, it can bring pain. The pain of deceit, lies, and loss. That's so true. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, that. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then your third love is? It's the unexpected love. Right. Oh, I think that's what happened with us, baby. Keep on going. Mm -hmm. uh, the love that will surprise you and make any negative idea we once had about love disappear. disappear. So we circle back around to Disney. And it will read one, two, and three. This is where you really encapsulate this. It says what? This is not the love one. Wait. Oh, yes, <laughs> this okay. is not the one we dreamed of. This love does not follow any rules. And this love breaks all notions we had about our greatest love and what that would look like. Yeah. So those three different types of love. And if some of you have been married maybe three times and you can identify each one of those being that, right? The dream one, I can't wait to spend my lifetime with them. And that didn't happen. The mm -hmm. second one was for money and security and making me better making them better it's almost like a, a collaboration team that's that like practice around love and then the last one is the it's one the where it's like love. you know what i can walk into the sunset of life with you is that, that like love. you've got mail i yeah, i don't remember that it's another tom hanks movie right it was with the ball on no, the island it wasn't tom yeah. hanks yeah it is 
Oh, maybe it was. Yeah, it's Tom Hanks. Okay, it was really old. I can't remember. But those three types <laughs> of love, because I was chatting with somebody that see um, earlier, and they're going, I'm done with love. I'm not going to have any more love. I'm done with love. I'm thinking, wait a second. They haven't had that third love. Yeah. Because they don't expect it, and that's the key, and they're thinking it's never going to happen. And that third love is, I, I didn't expect to meet you. I know, I didn't expect to meet you either. Right, and then you came out of a, a relationship. I was going out of a relationship, and it was unexpected, and it's maturing into exactly what that says. Yeah. So wherever you're at inside your relationship, and then Joette, are you single, right, Joette? You're single. Have you had love one and two? You have. Have you had love three yet? I don't think so. I'm not sure. You're not sure, right? It's I'm not sure, but I do know. I'm I'm a different kind of breed. I think I'm a I love unconditionally. So there are no conditions on my love. Whether I get hurt, whether that's my responsibility on how I view things and how I communicate. I'm huge on communication and respect. Okay. And so if I respect you and your communication, whether I agree with it or not there's a love that's going to be there because whatever you do, it's not going to waver how I love you. I'm going to love you. Yeah. But, but there's expectations too. There's, there's things that you expect out of your partner. And if they disappoint you on a regular basis, that love might still be there, but the trust of the relationship diminishes. Yep. And that's um, where the communication comes in. I think, I think communication and respect comes in. I, I agree with that. But if you are with some, partner that's flawed you can communicate all you want and they still don't make things happen but then again but we are flawed all of us are flawed and so we if we love each other we're flawed yeah. you got to love that person through that flawness and you know what if you let somebody know what your expectation is and he lets you know what the expectation is and you got to be honest and if you're not honest that you cannot feel that or you can't can't fulfill that that's where the bridge is yeah. but i'm flawed and somebody's got to love me for my flaws. I mean, I'm you're close person, to perfect. You're the person that likes to take straight puppies, right? No, I do not. Oh, okay. I take, <laughs> I, no, I don't. I don't get myself in over my head. I try to not. Bruce, where are you at when it comes to relationships? So have you had that third love? I think I'm on four or five right now. <laughs> no, no, no. That's <laughs> the last <lesson> love. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I want to, oh yeah, I want to believe I have, yeah. You've had all three or you're- I believe so. You think so? So you've been married how many times? Slow down. Once. No, well, exactly. I've been, in long, I've been in a long-term relationship, but legally married once. And I'm wondering if that last one that ended was your, really your second relationship, your second love. And that's the one that really taught you the school of hard knocks. That's the one that really challenged you in a lot of ways. And that's the one that you've been coming out. You were bitter for a while. You're angry. I'm, I'm, not, I'm never bitter or angry. Don't make that. I think that was unexpected too, that, that we were just friends for six months. The, the, before you got married? No, no. The most recent, you're saying that I think I'm bitter of. No, 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 oh. no, 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 no. I'm saying you're, I, I'm not questioning. I'm just curious. That's what I'm, I'm oh, saying. Oh. Let, me, let me go to Lon Ray. Lon Ray, uh, love-wise, where are you at? Well, I think I've had all three at least twice. Well, maybe. I mean, this is all possible, right? Where are you with when it comes to relation? Are you single? Yeah, super, super single. <laughs> and if you think about your first fairy tale love, how old were you when you had your first fairy tale love? Uh, you mean in adult life? Yeah. Or just, yeah. Uh, my first fairy tale love, where it was reciprocated. Uh was probably yeah it was in high school and how long like, wait high school see it could happen in high school i see did you have one of those high school love loves because i didn't uh i wasn't allowed to i did have a crush my dad would have killed me if i found one yeah and i think that's different right so you had a high school and that was a long-term thing short-term thing well it was long-term until i went away to college and there then you, and you just blundered and just met a ton of them. no actually i didn't i was uh she was afraid that i would so oh. he actually broke up with me yeah. let's go to ryan ryan i'm not sure if you heard you have three types of loves you have your first love your fairy tale love your second love is that love that you know what we can make it let's 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 put it together uh, this is the love where you really learn about yourself, and that's the, we call it the love of hard knocks. This is where you really are challenged in that relationship. And then your third love is the one that's unexpected, and that's generally the one that 
you go into the sunset together with. How many loves have you had? Yeah, that's you just you just uh, did the story of my dating life. That's exactly what happened. I had a uh, I had like a high school sweetheart, and it was serious, you know, for high school, and uh, and I, I ended up living with her family um, because I had kind of a rough situation going on, and so her family loved me. I moved in with them. She was a year ahead of me. She went to college, and then I, I broke up with her, and I stayed with her family. So that says a lot. Yeah, <laughs> and then um, but then you know, military, obviously very single for four years, but then I I met someone in my early 20s and, and like it was just a brutal relationship that's exactly what happened we learned all of our lessons and um totally loved her but like i don't think i had the emotional intelligence to love her right you know i just had a lot of love for her and then and then i met carly just out of nowhere i was like it was my 30th birthday and i remember i invited like all the girls i was dating to the same party and which is a stupid move, but I was too stupid to know that. And like a couple of girls cried, you know, I like, you know, left with, with a rando. It was just kind of a bad move. And I was like, man, I'm ready for some substance. And then like three weeks later in walks Carly and like done, like that was it. And here we are, but and, like a decade later. And Carly's definitely above your pay grade. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I do not deserve that woman. <laughs> <laughs> I love hearing that. Hey, Sammy, we're going to go over to you. Sammy, it's great to see you there uh, in the Chicago area. Sammy? I am. Hey, what's going on, Ken? What loves have you gone through? I had the high school love, the college love, and then I've been single for like, I'm like hitting my third year, but it's just like right now I'm just so career driven. I don't want anything holding me back, kids, lover. And it's just one of those things where people are like, hey, I want to grow together. I want to see you grow and also see my partner grow versus me I'm like I just I'm just looking at myself like I don't want anything to hold me back I, I, I've never been in that I think I've always been dating someone all my life I've never had that that time which you're having at a young age which is probably almost like rocket fuel on a career because you could just focus yeah we could just put gasoline on a fire what what it wasn't that good for you which one no we well, had that free time oh. to focus on you Guys. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm like trapped in the oh, the bad relationship part. Uh, yeah, I had really good free time, and I learned a lot, and I grew, and I did that over a two year period. Two years. Okay. So what I wanted to talk about today is when you do have a partner, when you do have someone you're interested in, what type, kind of questions should you talk about? Mm -hmm. And I don't even know the answers with us. Okay. So I went back and I looked at. 50 questions you should ask one another. And I'm willing to bet you probably don't know the answer regarding me or myself, or maybe even when it comes to, David, I know you're married. Bruce, I'm wondering if you're past. I'm not, I'm not married, but I've been with the same person for 21 years. 21 years, dude, get a ring. You're married. Get a ring. You're okay? just married with lots of city. Like I, I asked her all the time. And she's why got this. No. It's some neurotic thing. She thinks that if she's married, she's psychologically tied down, and she has this image of herself as a single person, even though we live together and have been together 21 years. And it's something, it's some game she's playing with herself. Uh, so every once in a while, I'll propose to her and I'll say something like, "Listen, when I look at you, I want to be your ball and chain. I want to prevent you from ever being free again. I want to lock you." And just, I just try to spike her, her, her spike her, her anxiety. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't sound like it's um, working. You need to work on your lines. Let me just tell you, for a guy that writes lines for television and movies, you suck at it for yourself. No, but the thing is, we la this, our relationship, a little bit like yours, is based on laughing. Like, we're laughing all the time. Mm. So, David, all you it. have to do is change your last name by adding two letters. W-O. And then marry her, and she'll be a free woman. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's actually really good. No one has ever said that to me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that to her. I'm gonna say you can marry me and be a free woman, but I'll give you credit. Don't, don't say that. Don't, don't listen to what she's saying when it comes to this. She loves my humor. Uh -huh. It makes him laugh. Uh -huh. Andy, what love are you on right now? What, what, what do you got going? Andy Stack, who's driving his car. Are you in love one, two, or three? <laughs> um, I am textbook for what you just said. So I'm on number three. 
And, so and, I and number three was unexpected, right? Yeah. 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 Unexpected. And that's that's my that's my current wife, Stephanie. And uh yeah, absolutely unexpected because I, I uh number two I had to end because while it was transformative and absolutely, you know, what I what I needed, I felt like that through that process in number two, I I well, first round, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I think this is what love is. And it's, it's my, my wife I had my kids with 10 years. Uh, and then number two was like, oh, 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 no, no. This is what love is. Uh, and that was, with, uh, that was with my first Stephanie <laughs> for, about, for about seven years. And then while that was so many knocks along the way in that one, um, and that was a hard one I finally had to end because it wasn't, healthy for my kids uh and because it was a long dis distance relationship that could never get out of being long distance so you got smart with so, the, the, your current stephanie is your best stephanie stick with that one yes yeah, I'm, you I'm, never I'm, get in trouble by saying the wrong name yeah you're right that was right smart gosh exactly i just stick with stephanie's and no problem there was one time where i was dating too many people and i gave them all the same nickname yeah, I, I, yeah, this way I would not forget their names. I just called them the same thing. I know. What was the nickname? Horrible. It was Jelly Bean. It was horrible. <laughs> yeah, it was Jelly Bean. But I wouldn't mess up. That's I was horrible. young. I was young. Okay. That's I was young horrible. and stupid. Okay. Daddy, has he ever called you Jelly Bean? No. No. Never. Right? Good. Call me other things. I have not called you other things. <laughs> if he calls you Jelly Bean, that means he's got like, oh, God, yeah, I've her name. <laughs> so I want to go through these questions and I have different set. I set the questions into different groups and these are things I, I, I should post this. I put a lot of time in this. So I went after dreams in the future questions. I went after favorites. I went after sex and relationship. And then I went after deep personal questions and this list, like even Bruce, I look at Bruce going, Oh man, I could never ask some of these questions. But I think as a partner, you need to have this stuff in your arsenal. So, Joette, when you start dating again and you're hanging out with this guy that you're really into, you start asking these questions. They start going at the surface and they go deeper and deeper and deeper. Let me go after some basic ones. And Bruce, take notes because you have a virtual date tomorrow. Yeah, Bruce does. <laughs> Bruce does has a, have a virtual date. Actually, you set a bunch of people on dates this week. Yeah, I'm working on it. Actually, one date is with who? Chelsea Handler. Yes, actually, that's yeah. true. I set someone up with Chelsea Handler. Yeah, so Chelsea's <laughs> going on a blind date with one of the metal guys this week, which I think is kind of funny. I'm always working it. She's going to eat him up alive. She is, actually. Okay, here we go. It's going to be fun to watch. Let's have fun. Spread the love. Spread the love. Yeah, spread the love. <laughs> Chelsea would do that. I'm going to ask all of you this question because you probably should have answered. Let me ask you, what is your favorite film? Mm. I draw a blank because I love so many I can't pick. Andy, what's your favorite film? I'm gonna ask am I answering this? Am I answering this with a? So I would have to say, Top Gun, because it's it is, it, it's just a that's just a funny we, it's more of a funny college thing that we kind of keep. Um, but is that really your favorite film? Okay, so no, no, probably not. Answer it truthfully. Don't you're not in college, buddy. Favorite yeah. film. Andy, thinking. Are you thinking? What's yeah? Stephanie's I'm thinking. Film? What's Stephanie's favorite film? I guess I guess you, you can't go wrong with Shawshank. Shawshank Redemption's your favorite. Mm -hmm. Mine, mine is The Matrix, without a doubt. Which one? Because I don't know. There's so many. I just oh, there's so many films I love. It, this is, gets tough, doesn't it? What? I really, I'm 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 film fickle. I just love too many. It's not fair for me to just assign it to All one. All right. Ready? Let's go after another one. This is where it gets tough, okay? Okay. What was your favorite class in school? Boy, you're going back in time. I, I deliberately. Really think Sandy, about what was your favorite, I uh, mean, uh, Sammy, what was your favorite class in school? Oh. What, uh, uh, I was uh, math, math. Just math. Math was your favorite. Do you know yours? You know, I would say actually, surprisingly, it was English. English was yours. Yeah. Right? History was mine. I love history. All right, let's go after another one. Here we go. 
what is your favorite childhood memory? Let's go to Lonray. Lonray, your favorite childhood memory. What was it? I mean, now, uh, favorite childhood memory. That is a tough one. Uh, probably when my grandparents would come into town, uh, and then they would leave, and I would run, at, chase the car as far as I possibly could before I passed out. You sure that was you or a dog you had? Yeah, that was me. That was you. You were that guy. Oh, that guy. Favorite, what was your favorite childhood memory? Easy. Driving to Florida with my, my family and hanging out with my dad when everyone was sleeping. Mm -hmm. My favorite, favorite, favorite. How about you? You know, it would probably be being on the airplane with my dad flying to Disneyland. Oh, that's pretty cool. It was just the two of us. That's a great one. All right, this is going to go to David. David, here it is. I want you to tell me your favorite thing about yourself. Um, it's, you can relate to this one. And by the way, did you say The Matrix was your favorite movie? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I have two favorite movies, and The Matrix is definitely one of them. So no, sometimes I'm going to have to, we have to, okay, my other one is a French movie called Amelie. Oh, Amelie, uh, beautiful, oh, yeah, so great, good. great movie. All right, so, so again, Favorite thing about yourself? Well, people talk about getting out of the box or thinking outside the box. I was never in the box, ever. From the time I was a little child, I have memories going back to six months old. I was out of the box at six months old. I'm still out of the box. And that's my favorite thing, that, that uh, when I was in college, I studied cultural anthropology. I just sort of looked at cultures as constructs, sort of arbitrarily thrown together because and I lived in Africa for a year, they had a different culture, a different set of constructs. So I just never sort of bought into the prevailing construct and saw, always thought is like some constructs I like, some I don't, but I was always, always I can move in and out of culture. Always and been out of the box. Creative guy. Yeah, always been out of the box. That's my favorite thing. My favorite thing about myself? About yourself. That I'm pretty open to trying new things. You certainly are. Yeah. Very much so. Uh, me is a, a constant energy source. That is so true. Constant. Yeah, that's a very that's very true about you. <laughs> it's true. I. All right, here we go. I'm going to go to. Uh, actually, I'm going to go to King James on this one. Let's go to King James. Your favorite TV show. Uh, are we talking past, present, or future? Doesn't matter. I actually don't watch TV. Did you watch anything when you were a kid? Um, I just used to like, uh, and, now, and now for something completely different, Mon Monty Python. Monty Python, good call. Yeah. Matter of fact, my, I, son, my uh, son's been binging that lately. Hmm. Who? My son, Nikolai. He's oh, really into Monty Python. That's a, that's a good orbit to be in. It certainly is. What do you got, baby? <laughs> Film Fickle, I can't make a decision TV. on that. TV. TV kind of falls in that same category. I did really enjoy Dead Like Me. Dead Like Me? Mm -hmm. Me, it's Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones was awesome too. See, now you put Game of Thrones in my mind. Now I can't get off of that one. Okay, let's go after another one. What would be your go-to karaoke song? Okay, go-to karaoke song, Joette. Let's go to Joette. Go-to karaoke song. What would that be? <laughs> 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 Bruce is laughing. Uh, at the karaoke, I can tell you, let me look it up because me and my, oh, Fire and Desire, me and my son do it all the time. Fire and Desire, how's that go? Oh, oh, I got it. But, but I can't sing it. See, we go up there and he brings mama up there, me and him are up there, and he goes, I got your part, mama, hold on, hold on. And I'm like, okay, I'll just do the do up in the background, but it is so much fun with my kid. You know, Fire and Desire, hmm. No. You don't? No. Don't know it. Do you? No. Does you that, me on that anybody one. else know it? Anyone else can sing Fire and Desire? That would okay. be. She's going to play it for us. I got you. Rick James. Rick, Rick James. <laughs> I'm 55. Come on now. My kid loves it. <laughs> James. All right. Joette, thanks a lot for taking us down memory lane. I love it. <laughs> okay, let's go to, oh, what, what would be your go-to karaoke song? 
Uh, I like the Cry Me a River song, but the old one, not the Justin Timberlake one. Really? Mm -hmm. I love karaoke that. All right, I hate to say this, this is so like white boy suburban, okay? Either Fly Like an Eagle or Hotel California. Oh, God. I know, God, it's so, cheese yeah, ball. it is cheese ball. Oh, I hate that, okay. <laughs> let's, let's, let's do a couple more. I'm gonna go to Bruce, your favorite place. What is your favorite place, Bruce? Besides your house? Um, probably <laughs> uh, Melbourne, Australia. I've been there three times. Melbourne, people Australia. Are, That's your favorite place. People are nice. The atmosphere. Everything was nice about it. There was no negative experience. Wait, is that Stephanie who just joined us? It is Stephanie. Melbourne sounds amazing. I love it there. Melbourne's great. All right. How about you? My favorite place? Yeah, favorite place. Uh, I would have to say Costa Rica. Anywhere specific? Just everywhere. Okay. I just love Costa Rica. Those sweet plantains, deep fried sweet plantains are so good. All right. And the ocean is so beautiful and the animals and the people right. and the weather. Okay. I could just spend forever there. Okay, I didn't know that. I really didn't know that. Mine, you know, it's Ubud. Mm. Ubud, Bali, without a doubt. Take me there. Costa Africa. Rica, Trump's Bali. I don't know. Culture is the key. Yeah. That's what I like about so that. good culture. Okay, we're going to go a little deeper now. Those are fun. Those are the surface ones, okay? And I have a list of uh, 18, 13, 13 surface questions. And I'll post inside the portal. I'm going to post these in the portal. Now, these are more about dream, dreams, and the future. These are questions you should be asking either both yourself, you should know these about yourself, and your partner. You need to know these. First one, here we go. What are some of the highest <coughs> value things on your bucket list? What are some of the highest valued things on your bucket list? Let's go to Stephanie, who, by the way, has the coolest name for her Zoom account. It's just user. <laughs> that, that would be the old you. You're not like that now. You, you're not a user, Stephanie. Don't be that way. Um, can you hear me? Yes. No. Oh, okay. So I don't do technology. My <laughs> 10-year-old daughter hooked me up with this. So, um, uh, Something that for for me, I guess, anything that builds community. No, but on your bucket, you know what a bucket list is. Yeah, bucket list. So, um, bucket list. Things you want to do. Things oh, I want to, something on my bucket list. I want to go to a filming of Saturday Night Live. We were just talking about that. So wow. that's something fun on my bucket list. Yeah. I love that. Right. That's a great one. Okay. What's on your bucket list? Uh, well, high value things on my bucket list. I want to go back to two trips with the metal community in whole is Svalbard and Machu Picchu. That's cool because I want to go and go with reindeer and take pictures. Oh, I like that. That's in the snow with the Christmas lights and the reindeer and the whole thing. Svalbard. That's Svalbard. Okay. This one might be a little premature for some people or maybe on the other side is, do you want kids? And if so, what are some of the values you want to instill in them? Okay. So... Let me, let's go to a younger, let's go down. Actually, I'm going to, Sammy, I'm going to, because you are childless at this time. Do you want kids in the future? And what values do you want to instill in them? So actually, it's funny. I recently decided maybe like, like six months ago, because people have been asking me because I'm 27 and, you know, by now my family already had kids by then. So I, if, I officially said I do want kids, but I think the value the top three would be family, um, making sure you are uh, very in tune with yourself. And the third is uh, their work ethic. Their work ethic. Mm, that's good. Yeah. How about you, kids? Yes. Yep. And what value do you want to instill in them? Mm. What values? Respect. Okay. Kindness. Mm -hmm. And work ethic, I would go along with that one. That's solid. Those are solid. We don't I need lazy kids. No, can't have lazy kids. Um, okay, if you could gain one quality or ability, what would it be? Let's go to Ryan. Is Ryan still out there? Did he drop off? Oh, well, we lost him. Lost Ryan. Okay, let me go to Lon Ray. Lon Ray, if you could gain one ability or quality, what would it be? Are we talking uh, like real or supernatural? Real. 
Okay, real. Uh, the art of not giving a fuck. Oh, just like, just moving forward. Like of other people's opinions. Like, yeah. Mm, that's interesting. I like that one. I like that one a lot. How about you? Not sure. What would yours be? Uh, I like to absorb more information faster. Uh, I have a tendency to, when I read, I have to reread to really get it. And I wish I had the ability to absorb better. So mine would be being able to see numbers better. Okay. Like, you know how guys like Will Henschel can look at numbers on a list and be like, mm -hmm. the value is going to go up yep. here yep. like this. And yep. he does it like that. And I'm like, uh, I'm so confused right now. I get it. You're right. All right. Let's go to Bruce on this one. Bruce, have you ever wanted to live somewhere else? We're just practicing with you, Bruce. So you're ready for tomorrow. And where would yeah, yeah. I have I, um, I'm, I'm, I love LA. Um, but I think, uh, I've never, I've wanted to think about living in Miami at some point for some reason. Yeah. Cool. I've visited many times, but I could see living there too. Okay. I already know the answer to you. Oh, where's that? Yes. Yes. I could just say yes. Um, <laughs> Sandy, Sandy wants to live six months here, six months there, six months everywhere. That's, mm -hmm. that's yeah. something that we're actually trying to figure out how to do that. So it might be New Zealand, then Singapore, then Thailand, Paris. then Paris. Oh, wow. and maybe who knows morocco who knows but i already know the answer and i'm with you on that we're so yes <laughs> okay should we go a little deep i'm i'm, a, I'm about to go to the deep ones you want to do the deep ones sure hit it okay your first sexual experience 10 out of 10 one out of 10 and if you can be open why so I am going to go to James Golding on this. First sexual experience, 10 out of 10, one out of 10, and why? Are you talking about sexual experience with somebody else or? Yeah, yeah, let's go with that, okay? Because if it's disappointing with yourself, that, that... <laughs> I'm just, I'm just joking, sorry. Right. Uh, <laughs> no. So, uh, probably three. Three out of ten. Yeah. And and why? And why? Uh, we just we had no clue what we were doing. We were fifteen and sixteen respectively, and just fumbling in the dark. But That's come cool. along, come a long way since then. <laughs> uh, okay, mine would be a two out of ten. Um, I before I went to the seminary, I wanted to get drunk fall in love and have sex. Mm. And I did all of them the same night. Ooh. Yeah, and that, that's probably why it made it so bad. Mm. It's amazing <laughs> you can even remember it. Yeah, first time for all of them, one night. Do you remember her name? Oh, your name was JoLynn Jones, of course. She lived on a farm. All right, move on. Uh, you wanna try that one? This is being recorded, right? Yep, it's on there. She'll not ever see it. <laughs> Not ever. <laughs> ever. Never, never. You want to try it? What? You want to skip that one? I'll say, is, can you go negative? Yes. Ne negative 11? Negative 11. You want to say why? It wasn't your choice. Exactly. There you go. All right, let's go. Um, are you satisfied with, this is a tough one. This is for couples right now, so it probably wouldn't work for single people, and that is the chemistry that you have. So. I'm going to go to Stephanie on that. Stephanie, 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 are you satisfied with the chemistry that you have with your partner? Pretend he's not on the phone with us. So Stephanie, trying to unmute you. But you are, there you are. All right. Are you satisfied with the chemistry and intimacy with your partner? Yeah. Just definitely. A, just a, oh, definitely. I just wanted to hear something a little more than yeah. Yeah, um, we actually sit and kind of check in on how things are going and if one of us, like right now during quarantine, you know, a recent question was, are you know, is the amount of sex we're having right now, is that enough for you? Um, do we need to do something differently? So, so. And he said no, 
it's not enough, right? Well, we have four kids, so we're able to kind of figure out like, okay, so let's figure out like, is it yes at times, no at other times. So, um, and it's nice that um, with busy, busy lives that we're, there's still chemistry there. So yeah, mm. without sleeping, without being able to often take care of yourselves and everything like that. So, wow, four kids. So I am a very unique man, being transparent. I'm more of a female in the aspect of I love foreplay. I love kissing. I love all that. And um, I love that. And it's, I'm more of a let's, let's start the engine slow, where most guys I know are wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and they're out the door. Yeah. Yep. So intimacy to me, I, I just love I love it. And you're like a, a very playful little, like, you know, you know, uh, it's, I don't want to say pussy cat because I just said the word pussy in front of a cat, but you're very playful in the way you are. And I love it. Aww. I love it. You can answer it or you're going to go back to negative 11. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> What's the next question? All right, here you go. Uh, what is your favorite meal to share on a date night? So I want you to go forward in your date night. Um, and let's go to Christine. Hello, Christine. Christine. Christine, we need to see you. Cameras need to be on. Hold on. I just, um, I didn't want to like show up without. There you are. Christine, your favorite Hi, meal to share on a date night, what would that be? Oh, the first thing that came to mind was pizza. <laughs> and I'm, I'm hungry, I guess, but I just ate lunch, so I guess not. I don't know. Pizza is one of my, one of my favorite foods. I like Sounds pizza. so good. I like pizza. Can I just say, sitting in a place among strangers being served my food is my favorite thing to share right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is so so true. true, yes. How about you? Yes. Favorite shareable meal on a date? I like dessert. I love to share dessert. Oh, dessert. Wow. I miss dessert. Because <laughs> okay. then it's not, you don't have to feel as guilty because you're sharing it. Instead of eating those 3,000 no, that just means you can get two. It just means you can get two and try different desserts. You don't have to pick exactly. one. All right. Mine, <laughs> it's very simple. It's French toast or pancakes. Yeah. Uh, I knew you were going to say that. I love it. Oh pancakes my. sounds so good right we now. We had two in years ago. a restaurant ago. with a hot plate and the butter still melting and extra syrup. Oh. Do you remember the last meal we had together? We were all sitting on the same side and we had pancakes and oh my God, and you guys were judging me for all the syrup I used. You did use a lot of syrup, <laughs> by the way. It was pretty insane, okay? Because you were on a food lifestyle path and you went on another path. <laughs> it definitely made a pivot. Pivot oh, is the word for this. It was movie. unchartered, the direction you were going. Okay, here we go. I want I just share that um, I'm of the school of thought that it's not who's at the table, but, well, sorry, the school of thought that says uh, it's not what's on the table, but who's at the table that matters. Well, I, absolutely. But that's why you're sharing it on that date. You want to. Yes. You want to. And who's at the table is so important. So as we get through this, Bernardo, let's go to Bernardo as he's driving. What song reminds you of your partner what crazy love what is it crazy love how does that go bernardo <laughs> is that the beyonce version <laughs> i'm very talented but i don't think my fans are ready for me yet <laughs> yeah you think you just step back on that one okay so my son reminds me of Sandy. She actually poo pooed it the other day. I poo pooed oh, it. Oh, he did. He too cheesy. Oh my god! All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. John Mayer. Oh, I know. Nobody Wonderland. Yeah, I love that song. Ah! <laughs> oh, That's another one. My another song one. that reminds me of you is "We Like to Party." We like to. We like to party. The thing up the Coming and oh God! Coming. Don't even know that song. That's a, that's an irritating song. That's why she's doing that. <laughs> he's been listening to it, and every oh, time it comes on, he's like, dun, 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 dun. "Oh, I hate it. that song." <laughs> All right, we're gonna dive a little deeper. By the way, thank you for hanging out with us. We're talking about questions you should be asking your partner, or when you're about to go in that relationship. These are the questions you want to have prepared 
in your arsenal. I put 50 of them together. We're just touching on a few different ones for each one of you to connect along the way. You want to, I'll let you pick one or two or do one here. Uh, let's do, ooh, when was the last time you cried? I like that one. Damn, I know the answer to that. Who do you want to pick? Let's ask Andy. Andy, last time you cried. Andy, Andy, we, he's disappeared actually. <laughs> he doesn't want to tell you he's crying right now. He, oh. he actually just had to jump out. Oh, sorry, Zach, okay. I'm here. Andy, Hello. the last time you cried. That was uh, Sunday morning. Why did we you all watched We watched the movie Onward together as a family. Oh, is that good? It's so good. That looks good. Hey, it's Pixar. Great, great, great story. Okay. And great family, family bonding. It's awesome. Okay. I Onward. love that. Last time you cried. Cry so much. <laughs> I think it was when I watched you cry. I cried last night. Mm -hmm. I cried last yeah. night. Oh, thanks, baby. Yeah. I cried That's last me. night because I had to do a project where I had to write a speech that my best friend was giving about me on my 80th birthday. So I had to project and see myself at 80 to do that. It was really good. Yeah, it made me cry because I didn't want to see myself at 80. <laughs> oh my gosh, I still had some good hair. Part of a class that you were uh, I do a master, I have a mastermind group, um, a series of eight guys that I share time with every we were we we hang out together and we challenge each other in really, really tough ways. So we have okay. we have different homework projects oh. that we have to do, and they're pretty deep. All right, pick another one, baby. I, I pick if you if there's anything you would change about yourself. Okay, let's go to Lanre on that. Lanre, besides not giving a fuck, as you said. And, and we know you wouldn't change your six pack abs. God, no, keep abs. that. That guy's got six packs on his penis, probably. He's in such great shape. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it is. Yep. Yeah. Oh, well, Stephanie, did you just say, yeah? Did you just agree with that? She did. Uh, no, I shook my head in disbelief. Oh, I thought Stephanie uh, agreed with that. I go, Andy, you have to have a talk with Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> Andre, what was I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> this is being recorded, right? <laughs> I not see it. All right. <laughs> what would you change? What would I change about myself? Yep. Physically, whatever. Oh, or just, anything. Um, let's see. What would I change about myself? I would probably change. I'd be like two inches taller. Really? Really? You're very yeah. tall already. Thanks. Two more inches. Wouldn't hurt. Mm, that's what he said. Okay. <sighs> that's what she said. Oh. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. Everybody said it. Everybody said it, okay? Look, everyone's thinking those two inches could be better spent, Lonre, than on your height. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. Exactly. That's what she said. <laughs> Did. That was the hype. Michael Jordan was well. He was six three. Uh huh. Whatever. Let let's. What, what, would, <laughs> what you, would you change about yourself? I'm gonna drink my water now. <laughs> I I kind of have two. I want one that I know I can get, so it's not change. I just have to choose. Mm -hmm. So choose and change are different. Okay. The choose is six pack, and I will get. I was supposed to get. Thank you, COVID, for not helping me out with that. <laughs> but um, something that I would enhance with myself. Um, I would change my confidence where I felt like I had more confidence because I, I have, you know, my confidence in so many, I have that imposter syndrome that it just, it just absorbs me constantly. So I don't see myself the way others see me. Yeah, that makes sense. How about you? What would I change? I don't know. I've changed quite a bit. I kind of like where I'm at right now. No, you got to pick something. <laughs> I would change my, hmm, oh boy, I'm feeling stumped right now. Come on. I would change my level of patience. <laughs> I like that one. Yes, that would be awesome. I'm very patient, mm. but in some cases, I'm not so patient. Okay. What would a perfect day look 
like to you? Bernardo, what would a perfect day look like to you? Hmm. That's, uh, that's an interesting question. And I, I, I don't think I, I could actually say what the perfect day would be, but I could tell you that a perfect day would be more along the lines of feeling the feelings of what I would have um, and, and, and have the ability to, to really kind of be there, enjoy the people, my partner who I'm with and not it be about other things that are wrapping my mind and my life up because there's so many important things out there that uh, I tend to not be as as with it as I'd like to be you know and and a perfect day would be that that day that you know you know when you you're 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 very present with somebody and you're really enjoying the moment and that whatever it was that we were doing, that would be a perfect day for me. I appreciate you answering the question without a real good answer, but okay. Um, <laughs> no, come on. That's, come on. that's a real day. answer. It's not about what I do. It's about how you do it. it so, well, it's the emotional ex outside of it. I get it. Perfect day. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Maybe we could bring in a real expert. Benito. Okay, so oh, what would the perfect day, day look like? <laughs> what would a perfect day look like to you, Jennifer? What would a perfect day look like to you? Hmm, well, it would start waking up with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Hey. Oh, All of a sudden it went dark, now's the make out. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Um, God, that's a good question. I would have to be beautiful weather. It would involve being, what are we doing? I don't know. Who's that? Oh, go on, go on, guys. We see you. We're, mis we're missing people. We're missing other people. I don't know. It's just, it switches sometimes. Don't yeah. worry about it. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, you it, can, it would involve, um, it would definitely involve time with my family. It would involve doing something outside in beautiful weather. Mm -hmm. It would probably involve the beach for sure. Yeah. All of the above. Okay, I like that. Good answers. Okay, Sandy, perfect, perfect day. Perfect day. Also waking up with you, and it would involve as well someplace tropical and beautiful, and amazing outdoor activities, and a call where I can be of service, like a Zoom call helping people. I love that, and delicious fruits, fresh yeah, well, food, and yeah. food, yeah, and yeah. A nap it would definitely involve a nap. Yeah. And just lots of laughter. That would be the perfect day. Proximity for me doesn't matter. First wake up, sex. Just saying right away, I'm going to be very specific. It's not just about waking up with you, it's sex with you. Um, and, then, me, then and then someone else, and we'd have a problem. And then um, <laughs> we've done that before. Uh, yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> so then it would be a shower, each other. I could go very detailed, guys, right? Great breakfast, <laughs> great breakfast, and then it'd be something that would be outdoors, an activity, like bike riding. In a lot of ways, it's stuff we do now. You had the perfect day yesterday. <laughs> Just saying, <laughs> twice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, twice I did. So a perfect day is just freedom, and I think my biggest enemy to me is the watch, the time. Yeah. I hate to have yeah. to look at what's going on. So if there's a way where time it doesn't matter, that's the perfect day. Yeah. Um, just getting deep, everyone. So we got 10 more minutes. Jump in anytime you want. We're gonna have we're gonna ask a few more of these questions to one another. Hope you guys enjoy this. I I will post them inside the portal. All right, here we go. Okay, I gotta go. Okay, bye. Bye, honey. I'm gonna ask Andy this question. Andy? I don't think he's there. Oh, anymore. he's not. He's not. Okay. I'm not going to ask Andy then. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to ask David. David. This is your partner asking you this question. Okay. What is your girlfriend's name? Han. H A N G Han. Say is it Yihan? Han. 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 H A N G. The A uh, is like ah. Uh, Han. Uh, okay. Is this being recorded? Um, okay. The question <laughs> is, on that one. she would ask you this. 
Ooh, do you trust me? Oh, that's an easy one. I was hoping you were going to ask me a difficult one. I fly around the world quite a bit, not like you can, but you know, I've been in India for four years and China 14 times. And if you are a white guy who is in shape and makes a little money, you have women throw themselves at you, especially in China. You know this. Korea too. And we just don't cheat. You know, I don't cheat on it. It's just like I'm not a cheater. And so uh, trust has never been an issue in us, like for between us. We completely trust each other. So there's never even come up. It's very, very bedrock to our relationship. That was an easy one. That it's interesting awful. that you went to fidelity as trust. That's where you went right away. I didn't think that. Oh, oh, that was, I thought what most women think about when they think about trust. I don't know. I don't know what they think when they say you trust. Like, what, what does trust mean to you? She, she, tr uh, she knows I'll never make fun of her, belittle her, put her down. So she, well, no, no, I'm not saying your answer is wrong. I was just, I'm, and maybe men go right away, like, I, I will, I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to paint this picture. I'm going to, it's not a dream. You need to trust me that I will take you on this, this, this path. Trust that I'm, I'm maneuvering us in the right direction. So trust uh, my bearings. Trust those things is where I thought. Fidelity oh, wow. wasn't even a thought I had even in my mind. That's interesting. Wow, that's interesting. Right? How I, you, Sandy, would, is, would you think of trust and fidelity or would you think of trust in something else? I think it's both. I think it's trust that you're going to be there, support and show up and be present. Yeah, yeah that's true. And then it's also trust in the choices that are going to be made, and that could include fidelity. So. How, about, how about you, uh, Stephanie? I still like your name, user. User. Um, when, if Andy would say, do you trust me? That's Andy asking you, do you trust him? Would it be yes, no, question mark? What would it be? Oh, yeah. Ab and how absolutely. about the other way around? Does he trust you? Yeah. But when um, I, I think trust, maybe, what's trust? Trust well, what? I think, uh, Sandy, I think it kind of touches on what you were saying. It's a mix of a bunch of things. So I don't think like it's only fidelity. I think it's trust that someone is looking out for your best interest. Trust that, um, trust that, awesome, nice job. That, um, <laughs> okay, I'm glad that we got the lost dog covered. So, um, it's trust that you can come to the other person and tell them something that you're, they're not going to want to hear. And that that's still a safe place to talk about that. Okay. So I think, uh, so I think, Hey, I've even in a marriage. So I'm working with this really gorgeous woman and she's amazing. And I really want you to come to dinner with us. Cause I want her to see that I'm really happy with my wife. Like those are safe conversations to have. At least that's how my marriage rolls out. So do we still, thank you so much. That's awesome. Let's go to, hmm. I, I'm, I'm going to go to Sammy. And the only reason Sammy is because I see you as being the youngest single person here. And I'm curious to know, what does a balanced <laughs> Thanks. relationship look like to you? Um, I would say the first thing that comes to my mind is, I hear a lot where it's like, my partner is my world. And for me, like when, how I digest that is, no, they're not my favorite part. No, they're not my world. They're my favorite part. So there's a balance of, I'm going to give you your own time. I'm going to give you, they're going to give me my own time in that sense. But knowing that this progress and our intentions are pure, we're not just doing it just so it makes me happy to hear. No, you're generally giving me the intentions in my time and vice versa. We're, and also the balance of being on the same page. So I feel like with the mixture of all that, that would be a good balance for me. Good balance on that. And how about you, Christine? What would be a balanced, healthy relationship to you? <laughs> Lots of laughter and great sex. But not laughing at the sex. <laughs> well, wow. Wow. How about you? Different kind of laugh for me. Health, health, healthy, balanced. What would it be? Uh, absolutely laughter, playfulness, and deep conversations. I like that you said deep conversation. You, laughter, of course, playful and laughter. Elevation. Yes. Elevating one another. 
consciously elevating one another. And awareness. Yeah, this is something we've been doing. Sandy threw something at me last week out of nowhere going, here you go, here's a journal. You're gonna start <laughs> writing in it. I, go, I put it by his bed oh, with a pen. Oh, and God. it's bright red, you can't miss and, it. And I can't, I, I go, I'm not telling you guys. I mean, being honest with you, it was almost like when the doctor goes, hey, everything's great, but we're gonna have to give you a bunch of shots. Oh, all right. <laughs> Cause you know, it's probably, you need it and it's going to hurt. So when the minute I saw that journal there, I go, Oh, so it sat there and she goes, all you got to do is put what you're grateful for. Three things. That's it. It's just three things. So go to bed, laying in bed. She goes, did you write your three things? I go, no, I'm tired. I'll do it tomorrow. She goes, you really should do it. And he did. Popped on the light. I wrote it down. And then at night I just thought about it. God, maybe I'm grateful of other things. I started thinking about it. And then the next day, already wrote it down before you and she leave and laid in bed. And then we shared. And now every night, I'm like eager to write it down. Actually, throughout the day, I'm conscious of thinking about, oh, this moment I am totally grateful for. Bookmark it. Like right now, I'm grateful for this. I am grateful for this moment of sharing time with you, being elbow to elbow to you, and going deep in this conversation. So... That right there, I think, is where that relationship, which makes it balance, is you made a suggestion, you nudged me enough to make me do it, realizing it was really good for me, which made it good for us. Exactly. And isn't it so much fun? And when we look back on those gratitude notes that we wrote down, we'll be even more grateful. Yeah. I'm really happy with that. Actually, today I was in a call and I was talking about confidence. Mm -hmm. And I made a recommendation because people said, how can we get more confidence? And it's the same thing with gratitude. Write down the things that you accomplished that day that you were proud of, that you succeeded at, that made you feel good. And at the end of the month, week, year, however long, when you go back and look at them, so many things happen that it just instantly gives you confidence and makes you feel grateful. So I just want to touch upon what we talked about today. First was those three loves. When you fall in love, on an average, most people fall in love three times. Your first love is that fairy tale love, which of course ends tragically. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Your second love is the one that you would consider the hard love. And that's the one that teaches you a lot of those life lessons. And then your third love is the one that's unexpected that really lean, brings you into that, that point in life to where you're together for the rest of your life. And those three loves might be right next to each other. I mean, my second and third love literally were back to back. They were. And it was unexpected. So if you're sitting out there and you're single going, all right, where is that love? What is going to happen? Just wait or don't wait and allow it to find you. And I think that's it. Any questions or anything from anyone else? Anything? Wanna, we'll just uh, what did you mean by elevate each other? What, what does it mean to elevate? Every I, just, I don't know what you, I know what the word means, but I don't know what you meant. I, I mean that whatever I was yesterday, um, our relationship takes us one not higher than whatever it was, either in awareness, consciousness, health and fitness. Uh, there's no stagnation. We're not stagnating. As a matter of fact, there's not been one day, even when I was sick or you were sick, I felt like we did not stagnate. I learned another way to help you out or help myself out or to help the, our, our, us out. And that only oh, great. Thanks. us helping the community out. We're able. We always yeah. are learning. Always. Always be learning every day. So guys, I really appreciate it Tuesday. I'm going to make this more open and I'm going to bring more singles into this. So this is going to be a, a great place for people that are looking at meeting people too, to elevate one another. So this is kind of our hang and it's open. It's going to be open to everybody, not just to metal members. Okay. So I want to create a place where we could talk about our, ourselves as in a couple. I think couples make strong, powerful uh, teams. I like seeing couples together. I really do. I like healthy relationships and I know you do too. Yes. And so, we like matchmaking. It's so much fun. Do. All right, everyone. Thanks a lot. See y'all later. Bye. Bye.